public workers are demanding higher pay. And taking a look at the weather for the North Suburban area today and tonight, windy, mostly cloudy, and we have a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, high today, 68, uh, low tonight, 43. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, again, a chance of morning lingering showers and a high of 58. Right now, cloudy, and we're still a ways away from that 68 degrees, they're saying for today. 55 is our current temperature, and I have with me as my guests in the studio today, Steve and Dan Ortel of the Both Barrels Band, and uh, why don't one of you grab the microphone there? And uh, <laughs> there it is. yeah, it's on. Here we go. Hi there. <laughs> How you doing today, guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. A little bit tired. We had to play last night. So where was that at? Up in Big Lake at the Coach Light Bar. Oh, okay. All right. How'd that go for you? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. We always pack that place. Okay, sounds good. And then you, you're you're gonna be playing uh, tonight, right over in uh, Blaine there. Right at yeah. Clementine's Bar in Blaine. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's what, uh, basically a lot of what we're going to be doing today is, is plugging some stuff you guys got coming up. And uh, one of them is this sheet you handed me here. And this is the uh, second annual Spring Fever Festival. And uh, why don't you tell them about the rest of it? That's just an outdoor party we're having up in Ice Sandy. I guess the best thing to do is to call on our information line and get directions when it's near in the time. It's on uh, May 21st, a Saturday afternoon. Should be a pretty fun deal with another band called Rendition. Okay, now where exactly is I'm having <laughs> trouble re reading this map here. Where, where exactly is it at? Well, it's kind of halfway between <laughs> Isani and uh, Highway 47, which would be... Uh, is that the one right out I here, isn't it? Yeah, 47? It's, the 47 is the one yeah. your radio station's on here. Okay. Just follow it north about uh, 25 <laughs> miles. <laughs> What's he laughing about <laughs> over there? Okay. All right. Well, let's see. What should we start plugging uh, after? Okay, we plug that one. Now, what else What else have you got coming? You want to mention the things that... Uh, let's plug Key that Country Radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that don't need no more. <laughs> <laughs> no more plugging, okay? Okay. It's all plugged up. <laughs> <laughs> Put on some Boat Barrels music or something for All right, well, already? <laughs> <laughs> you want to oh, talk a little bit? enough of that last night. Okay, well, let's see. What, 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 what can okay, we possibly we got a, a concert show coming up here with uh, Tanya Tucker at Thumpers, I believe, the first part of June. I don't know if that's for sure or not, but that's tentative right now. For sure, we'll be playing with Roseanne Cash in the middle of July at Thumpers and Coon Rapids, so just keep your ears open for when that date is. Okay, let me ask you a question about when something like that happens now. When a big star like that comes into town at a club like Thumpers and... You mean a big star like me? <laughs> oh, I've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> this will be Roseanne's first time in there. <laughs> now, we know just what to do when we get in there. She's fairly uh, new to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty much veterans at that bar. <laughs> okay, but no, I was wondering, now, do they bring in their own band, or do they have the, the warm-up band? Because I've seen it happen both ways. Where Depends that on how old and tired they are. Some <laughs> of these old, worn-out ones <laughs> come in there, and they, they just don't have the time to practice with the band, and they'll ask the, you know, the house band if they know their songs, come in and... Either that or they'll have a practice session for five minutes before the show. <laughs> We've never done that. We've never played. If they're on the downswing, they do that. Usually, Roseanne Cash and Tanya Tucker are still on the upstroke, so they'll probably come in with their own band and put on a good show. Okay. All right. Tanya Tucker's known for putting on a real good show. I have never seen Roseanne Cash, but... Uh, all righty. Um, well, she's a lot prettier than Johnny Kid. <laughs> <laughs> really, they're paying her over 50 bucks. Yeah. There. What is it? What? What it's was it? Over 50 bucks she's making playing there. <laughs> really? <laughs> they wouldn't say how much. But Gee, that's <laughs> a... <laughs> of course, now, playing with on the, on the same bill as, as big names is nothing new for you guys. You've done that before, right? And, uh, the first one that comes to mind is Merle Haggard. You bet. Yeah. Yeah, we played with a lot of them. Um, <laughs> do you want to want to go on that a little bit? There? <laughs> no, that that was not at the we played with a lot of big stars. Like Chill Hillman, he goes about 240 pounds when he's got weight on. We played with him before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the Merle Haggard thing. Let's talk a little bit, a bit about that because some of the people listening now probably, you know, might not have been listening the last time I had you guys on here. That was down at the Met, wasn't it? Or yeah, at the Met Center. We played with Merle Haggard. Uh, what was it? Uh, Ronnie Millsap and Johnny Paycheck. Yeah. All three of them. Johnny Paycheck showed up drunk. 
<laughs> well, he was DOA, drunk not, on arrival. That's nothing new, I don't well, think, for you him. Hear? Jerry Jeff Walker got picked up yesterday down in Texas for drunken driving. It's yeah, really I heard about that. Here we, we just played with him here last uh, summer, and, and he quit drinking. He gave up the sport of drinking. He must have took it up again. <laughs> yeah, I still, still, still have the old yeah. choir from that, yeah. It's, a, <clears throat> it's what I used to write my notes on on the back. Okay, uh, let's see. So what, oh, let's see, did you, rep, you played with Bobby Bear, too, didn't you? You bet. It was the same thing. And you, you told, uh, why don't you tell that we story again with, about uh, that? Yeah, that man, uh, was it him and Joe Ely? Yeah. A little known uh, Texas musician. He's popular down in Texas, not so much up here. And Bobby never brings, what was that you were saying? He, he never, never brings, brings his own guitar. I, I asked his sound guy, I said, you know, yeah, I asked to borrow my guitar. He said he never brings a guitar. It's nothing new. He, he always tells everybody he forgets it. And uh, a guy that worked with his band for like eight years said that he'd picked up over 100 guitars that way. People will give him their guitar. Of course, now that he's coming down again, <laughs> <laughs> now that he's not a rising star anymore and he's on his way down, I suppose they don't give him away as readily. All right. Well, uh, what else do you guys have coming up now uh, uh, besides the uh, uh, Spring Fever Festival? Saturday in night we're playing up in Duluth, uh, Superior area, at the Tri-State Fairgrounds. This will be the, what is it, about the 13th annual Smelt Fry? Yeah, something like that. The Legionnaires or somebody up there puts on. <laughs> How many, uh, they got a thousand pounds of smelt or something <laughs> yeah. they have to give away? I'm not kidding you. They have the a couple semi-loads full of beer. <laughs> they make you sick. Man. Yeah. Well, the last time we played there, there was 14,000 people. Hmm. 500 kegs of beer they went through. How many bands do they have for that up there? This year there's five bands. Last time we played there was three. But hmm. like I say, there'd be a, between eight and 15,000 people, depending on the weather, et cetera. Hmm. Kind of like a miniature Woodstock. <laughs> okay. And uh, why don't you, do you have one of your schedules with you guys? And just kind of run down the thing and, and uh, let everybody know. Now, you got uh, Clementine. We'll put on a song and we'll go get a schedule for you. Okay. All righty. Sounds good. Let's listen to this tune by the Both Barrels Band. Here they are with Daisy. Let me tell you about a little gal I knew named Daisy. Little overweight she worked because I was lazy. Well, she used to slap me upside the head if I didn't get up and make the bed. Sometimes my little Daisy drove me crazy. Darling, remember how I used to help you wash the dishes? Cause if I told you I was busy, who man did you get vicious? Well, I wonder how she's a doing now. Probably order as a mule on a three share plow. She's cold as ice, but her cooking still delicious. One day my little Daisy was in town grocery shopping. Some guy robbed a bank and Daisy just had to stop him. Why he was running down a street with his bag full of loot Till Daisy dropped him with her size 12 boots Sometimes my little Daisy did amaze me Darling, remember I used to help you wash the dishes Cause if I told you I was busy, you man, did you get vicious? Well, I wonder how she's a doing now. Probably ornery as a mule on a three share plow. She's cold as ass, but her cooking still delicious. Singing. One day my little Daisy decided she had to lose weight And she was getting skinny, eating little white pills, hardly ever ate Why then one day some city slickin' friends He took my little Daisy and I ain't seen her since They're a faucet couldn't face me, I love Daisy Darling, remember I used to help you wash the dishes Cause if I told you I was busy, you man, did you get vicious? Well, I wonder how she's a doing now Probably only as a mule on a three-share plow She's cold as ass, but her cooking's still delicious 
she's cold as ice, but her cooking's still delicious. Yes, it is. Okay, that's the Both Barrels Band and a song called Daisy. Who wrote that one? Eric. Steve did. You can't see me, but my name is Steve. <laughs> I don't know why you, they don't play that on your contemporary station, on your FM. Yeah. That's kind of a contemporary song. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more like temporary. <laughs> now, do, you, do you guys have a new uh, album in the works? or? No, just still thinking about just it. In the thought stage. Because you've, you've written a lot of, of stuff since this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of new songs we wrote. We play on the stage, but we haven't got the album out yet. All right. That you guys did a tune once that uh, Pavlitsky's. I saw you playing out there in the downstairs room. This is about a month ago, I guess. And uh, a song about y'all put shades on. Well, what was the name of that song? Something about being cool or something like that. Used to be cool. Yeah. Did uh, you guys write that one too, or yeah, was that? And Danny wrote that one too. Really? Right? Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> it's a true, true feeling song there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I see uh, Danny's got a schedule there, so why don't we run down some things here? In front of me, I do. We'll be at Clementine's tonight. Uh, here's Danny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm the guy that's sitting to the left of Steve. Okay, <laughs> we'll be at Clementine's bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tonight we'll be at Clementine's over there in Blaine, right across from the Blaine City Hall. So you kind of cruise out of there lightly when you're leaving because you're right across from the police station. <laughs> and tomorrow night's a big <laughs> smelt fry up in Duluth Superior. Uh, that'll there'll be five bands up there and uh, Sunday's Mother's Day. Play yeah, your mother flowers. We're taking <laughs> off Sunday for Mother's Day. We'll be playing for our mother that night. <laughs> and next Wednesday we'll be at the Union Bar in Northeast Minneapolis. And next Thursday back at the Coach Light Bar in downtown Big Lake. There's always a good time in Big Lake, <laughs> great big town. <laughs> they have a pretty fun uh, group of people up there. Or? Yeah. Oh yeah, they jump on tables and stuff. <laughs> No violence or nothing, just a good time crowd. Uh, the 13th and 14th, which is opening of fishing, will be at the Pink Diamond on Ann Lake. If anybody knows where Ann Lake is, it's straight out 47 until you get to Ogilvy, or is it? Yeah, it's five miles north of Ogilvy. Bring your fishing pole and your tackle box Maybe. and go fishing. <laughs> Make sure you, yeah, wait, you got to wait till after 6 o'clock so you don't hit the rush hour in Ogilvy. You get tied up in the, on the <coughs> freeway there. <laughs> okay, and then... Uh, and we'll hold off right there because nobody cares any further. Than that. <laughs> oh, if anybody would like forget. to uh, know where to or how or when to see us, well, should we do that now? Oh wait a minute! I gotta Will tell it? them there's a private party coming up. We're playing. When is that? May 22nd <coughs> at the Stillwater State uh, Penitentiary. You're not invited, but we thought we'd uh, announce that. Well, <laughs> it, it's po it possibly will be uh, recorded on Channel Two. Uh, they're supposed to come out. Hmm. Forget the name of the people that are coming. I'm sure you'll simulcast it with your on your contemporary station like you always do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and Channel 2 is supposed to come out and videotape it, and then we're going to have uh, White Castle or is it Burger King hamburgers or something. And uh, Is that for us? Or Dairy or Queen. No, for us. They're going to have because we, we demanded a meal this time when we come <laughs> up there. And I guess the inmates are going to get it too. They're going to, or somebody's going to come. I forgot who it was. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> some notorious ice cream place. I'm trying to think of what's the name of the Bridgman's. Bridgman or one oh, of them okay. is coming in. They're going to cater it, and then uh, McDonald's or one of those. That's a lot of cake. people. And we'll have a captive audience there, but there, it's a private party. It'll be. <laughs> it'll uh, there'll no be no minors and uh, no women or alcohol allowed. Right. Well, who do they dance with? Well, <laughs> we were not supposed to repeat that. They, oh. <laughs> they used to have a, w a woman running our sound for us, but we no longer do. Otherwise, that was about the only female I've ever seen at our private parties <laughs> at Stillwater. All righty. We also do shows at the Sandstone Federal Penitentiary. And <laughs> coming up May 25th through 29th, we will be at Peabody's in Invergrove Heights with an unknown national act. He hasn't told me who's coming in there. Hmm. They have one every week, about every week. Now, uh, this week they got Boxcar Willie there. Last week they had uh, Ricky Nelson, and week before they had Bellamy Brothers. Hmm. So I don't know who will be there. That'll that's you know will be as big a surprise to us as it will be to anybody else. Okay. Kiss we will, will be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody like that. <laughs> but we will be there the the whole last week of uh, May. You guys ever thought about putting makeup on and? Uh... Oh yeah. <laughs> when the people wouldn't know how old we're getting to be. 
<laughs> well, one year for Mother's Day, we came out on the stage in, in dresses. Yeah, that's about as close as we came to getting dressed up. Well, that, I heard about one time, too, where you guys came out one, one night and shaved your beards off on stage or something. Was that yeah, it? that was about a year ago, as a matter of fact. I think it's about time to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we for those that aren't really that interested at this time, <laughs> most people don't think about what they're going to do in the nighttime until the nighttime comes. We have a 24-hour recording service which tells you 24 hours a day where both barrels will be playing at. Should we right. give that a, a try or put that over now, here? Now, right at this moment, <laughs> Mark Jones is going to dial the party line number. Hold the phone. All right, that now. number is 434 now, wait a second here. Okay. 6136. Four, 6, 1, 3, 6. And are you That's in for a treat? Repeat. Okay. 434-6136. Here we go. Hey, this Friday, May 6th, the Both Barrels Band will be at Clementine's in Blaine on 91st Avenue, right across Highway 65 from Blaine City Hall. Clementine's is 3-2 and set up, so BYOB. And Saturday, May 7th, we're heading to Superior, Wisconsin for the annual smell fry at the Tri-County Fairgrounds. Best directions I can give you is to head to Superior and ask for directions from whoever you can find. $10 admission, five bands from noon till midnight, all the smelt you can eat, overnight camping. Wow, it's like Woodstock, man. Happy smell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. And that was the Both Bills party line, <laughs> yeah. dialed by Mark Jones yes. of Katy Country Radio. <laughs> okay, on with the show. Let's put on another song. All righty, we'll put listen to Put on something it. Oh, wait a second. real loud. i got to flip the album over here. Okay. We'll put on Trying to Catch the Sun. You haven't played that one Trent, yet. Haven't we? Okay, well, i got to go back this to this This is a summer here. song by the Both Bills man. As soon as Mark gets his act together over there. Okay, this, this is, this is going to be a five-minute song. <laughs> You're gonna have some time to rest. Okay, here we go with uh, trying to catch the sun. <laughs> trying to catch the sun. There they are. That's the Both Barrels Band. And uh, which one of you guys can take credit for writing that song? That's Dan. Danny, he's sitting right next to me. This I'm is Steve. me. Yeah. What the? What the? Not to be mistaken with Steve. <laughs> Oh, Danny's middle name is Steve. Yeah. So, how long have you guys known each other? Oh, <laughs> about all our lives. 29 years I've known Danny. Same, I guess, for him. Now, now, what what is it on, on the songwriting? Now, it's, it seems like uh, does Steve write the funny ones and you write the serious ones, or how does that well, work? It, we both write serious and funny songs. Okay. Actually, they're all pretty serious. Seriously funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're serious about them when we write them. All righty. Uh, do you guys have another one of those uh, things coming up uh, a couple summers ago? You put all the band stuff on a pontoon boat and, and floated around a lake or something? You yeah, try that again? Yeah, we organized right yet. I don't know them people last don't. Year, we got rained out last year. And our ship didn't come in. We didn't get rained out. Wasn't it just the ship never showed up that was oh, going to take us around the lake? That was the year before. <laughs> oh, yeah. You never can count on anything when you live in Minnesota as far as the weather goes. So. It may snow next week. So yeah. Who knows? we got to hit it right in the dead of the middle of the summer, in the heat of the summer. We always wait till the end of the year, and, it, and then, then the weather's too touchy. Okay. A lot of parades coming up, though. We would plan on the semi-trailers, the Aquatennial and the 4th of July. Go ahead. Tell yeah, we'll be. We'll be. They can't hear Steve. He's over there yelling. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in the Aquatennial <laughs> Parade this year again. Okay. Uh, probably both the Torchlight and the Grand Day Parade. Yeah, the Fourth of July Parade over in Forest Lake. <laughs> Caposia Days Parade. The what? <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you tell me that again. The Caposia Days Parade. Uh, that's down in where is it? St. Paul. Yeah. What is it? We don't remember. What's the Caposia, Caposia Day? Has yeah, suppose. It's supposed, supposed to be. <laughs> Caposia <laughs> is supposed to mean that that was, well, anyway, that, that was the name of St. Paul when the Indians ruled that area down there. The name of the village was Caposia. Caposia Village, I suppose. I suppose it's an Indian celebration for St. Paul or something. Yeah. We don't know where okay. who St. Paul was. <laughs> 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 no, we don't know. We don't. We don't know when St. Paul came into the picture or anything. Alrighty. And I, I had another we're question. Old, but we're not quite that old. No. <laughs> we don't know what happened. We don't even know if the white men and the Indians ever fought. Okay. Okay. We just. We're just taking our. Uh, 
elders' word for it, as far as they they weren't even around then. Okay, now the city pages. Oh yeah, that's what I was. We were you guys are nominated. Yeah, yeah so our reason. album happened to be nominated amongst all the other uh, punk rock bands. <laughs> Is it in there? Is it in the, the new wave music and the punkabilly and all that? They nominated <laughs> our album. <laughs> No, it's not in this week, City Pages. No, they'll have what they'll have is a regular uh, music awards here. And they're going to have it down at the Carlton Celebrity Room to announce it. Turn to the right page. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in order to find out that we didn't win the album of the year, <laughs> that we were merely nominated <laughs> out of pity towards country music. <laughs> but anyways... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to page through these city pages here and find out when the date is. I don't know just yet. Oh, no, you went past it then. Oh, okay. Well, we can always get back to that later. I'll let you <laughs> May, uh, Monday, May uh, 12th. Well, it? they got what Mary Jane Alms playing out there that night. Yes, yeah, they'll have uh, quite a few of the local bands playing there uh, for these music awards. I'm sure it's some kind of a gimmick to. Uh, oh, they uh, serve. Uh, there it is right here. The 1983 Minnesota Music Awards. Monday, May 16th, 8 p.m., Carlton Celebrity Room. Awards ceremony and live entertainment by Mary Jane Allman, Doug Maynard, Lamont Cranston, Metro All-Star, Patty Peterson, The Phones, J.D. Steel Singers, The Wallets, plus others. That must be <laughs> us, huh? Yeah, I don't know if others. we're supposed to be there or not. We're just supposed to be there to make sure that we Tickets didn't. Tickets for sale, it says there. Oh, uh, you bet. If there's anybody interested in that. And wants to go find out that both barrels did not win the album of the year <laughs> award. Tickets are available at the Carlton and at the Wax Museums. For further information, call 854-9300. Hmm. 854-9300. Right. Once again, that's 854-9300. Okay. And if you order now, then you will watch. Yeah, buy them by the dozen <laughs> and go see the Minnesota Music Awards. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see here. Since since we haven't done this for a while, why don't we do like in the old days, the old interviews that we did, and, and just start running down the, the list here and oh, find out all... Same old bunch of questions. All right. Well, hey, again. it's been a long time. I haven't done one of these well, things for a while. That, maybe okay. we can think of a different answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't got to think of a different question. I suppose we can just answer them differently. Okay. <laughs> you question him. Yeah. Right. We're going to question you this time and ask you about music. You should, you I don't know anything around. about it. <laughs> You've been around. Jones. You're around. You got more music here than we got. We only got one album. You got about 50 <laughs> of them there. 60, 100, 200. I don't know. How many do you think? Okay. Who's Who's Slim Whitman? Huh? Who's Slim Whitman? Is he's he one a, of them He's the guy that goes up with his voice every time oh, he goes okay. <laughs> All right, shoot. Let's hear some All right. Why don't we, uh, who all is in the group besides you guys? I want an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give him a little. Give all him right. Up. We got Al, a guy, great big guy that sets up our equipment. Zimbrook is his last name. Oh, it is. I never knew his last name. <laughs> Al Zimbrook is our setup man. He also drives our bus. Big yeah. old bus. Yeah, both barrels bus that just came in. Oh, really? You got a bus now? You betcha. betcha. Huh. Yeah. Just like everything that the big band's got. Haven't big seen band anything. sound. Is it like uh, Daisy Dillman's or? No, it's. Uh, have you seen theirs? No, we haven't seen their bus, so we really They're couldn't say if it's like <laughs> theirs, but I would have to guess it's not. The difference there. Either that or it is. They, they told me they wanted forty-five thousand for theirs, and uh, we got ours for twenty-two hundred. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Who else is in the group now? Okay, Gary Karens. That's the guy with the bass vo vocal that you heard in there on Daisy there. He plays lead guitar, steel guitar, and he sings now and then. Excellent musician. Yeah. And when he shows up, that's another reason for you to always use the party line. Now, Gary <laughs> Karens, our lead guitar player, didn't use it the other night and didn't show up for a job at Duffy's Bar. That's Duffy's down in Minneapolis. What, did, what are you doing in, in a circumstance like well, that? Well, we called another uh, creep musician from northeast Minneapolis and came in, and he filled in until Gary got there. Hmm. Now, you had something happen at Pavlitsky's about a month ago, too, where your drummer got hurt. Oh, it was an awful tragedy. <laughs> Three stitches in rapid succession he had to have put in his thumb. And yet he and came back and, and played. And he came back through, yeah, after that, all the turmoil that he'd been through. <laughs> after 15 minutes of intensive uh, surgery on his thumb, he returned and played the night out. Hmm. Yeah, Actually, I think he just wanted a break. We had a our sound man played drums. He drummed, set in for him. I think Brian just needed a little time off. 
That's Brian Helmbrick. Yeah, that's our drummer, <laughs> Brian Helmbrick. He's from Sorterville. Also files with the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> then we got Bob Boucher on bass guitar <laughs> and some vocals. Alrighty. What I guess that, that covers just about everybody. You always, you always have a, our new sound man. We don't know his name. What is his name? Brad? Brad. Brad. Yeah, yeah, you, you guys always have a big group of people that stand back there by the soundboard. It's hard to tell which one's running it and, and who ain't. Oh, no. You, you were out the other night and seen us. That was because we were breaking in the new sound. Oh, guys, okay. So the old one. Yeah. Okay. This was OJT, on-the-job training. We were teaching him how to run sound first. Okay. Our old uh, sound man went with uh, one of the rock and roll bands and going to go seek his fame and fortune around the country and come back broke in about two months and ask <laughs> us for a job again. <laughs> fame and misfortune. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, how long has this band been together now? Four years okay. we've been together. The same five guys uh, on the stage. We've changed a little. Uh, some of our other clientele that worked for the band, but the, Once again, the, the people on the stage are the same five guys. That's Brian, Gary, Bob, Steve. Steve, and Dan. Do you guys remember the first time you came in to do that talk show at the end? You cut a promo for the station. Yeah, and had then little you cut it off. Well, I didn't. Sure. Well, sure. <laughs> Program director. Well, I still. We'll rough them up a little bit. <laughs> Straighten them out. I still like that. You guys remember how it went? Can you do it hey again? There. Hi there. Ho. We're on the radio. <laughs> but there was more though. Sure. I, well, we can't remember all that. We make up a new one for you before we leave today, if they don't mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Just thought maybe we'd remember that. Okay. Let's see. Um, how'd you come up with that name for the group? Boy, I don't know that. Yeah, we, were just we had a dozen different names, and we just happened to pick both barrels because it sounded the best. Steve, I think, dreamed that up. Who draws the the little guy on your posters and I on the album? That's me, Dan. Yeah? All righty. <laughs> Dan from the Both Barrels Band. Man, he's the man. <laughs> and you're on AM 1470. There you go. A new promo. Okay. Why do why do some bands, as yourselves do, go with the, the sound man? Does that make a, di a big difference? Well, then, he, see, we don't know what we sound like out there. We have no <laughs> concept of what's going out <clears throat> there. You know, we only know what's coming back at us, you know, like tomatoes or beer <laughs> bottles or popcorn or just paper airplanes spitballs <laughs> but we have no concept of what's going out at the people see right and, and uh, of course the monitors are important yeah we we have a stage mix too so we can make ourselves sound the way we want on the stage okay but that's Alrighty. what the sound man's out there for plus he sets up all the equipment so we can come late okay we don't have to get there two hours early anymore so you guys never have to worry about any of that? No. Well, we now. still worry about it when the guy's half asleep sometimes. But <laughs> it does help, though, because you're you're really tired. If you have to come and set up before the show, you can't put on as good a show. But it boils down so to So what you have is a full-time maintenance man and, uh, you know, and someone to holler at when things don't go right. Okay. All righty. What is it? Let's, let's talk a little bit about some more of the songs, because you guys, like I said, have written a lot more since the last time, or since this album was getting out. Where did you get the idea for that song about uh, uh, the, the the fair and the Sharon or whatever it is and the lady in the in the tent? We don't have to oh, go into. I this. never got that idea. I just changed <laughs> the words a little. That's a David Bromberg song. Oh, oh, okay. The one about Sharon. No, that I didn't. I just borrowed that from David Bromberg. Oh. Okay. I don't want to lay claim to that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's but, see. Uh, maybe you could ask David Bromberg next time he's in your studio and ask him how he got the idea. <laughs> All right. What are some other songs that you guys have, have written since this album came out? Oh, going to beat the band is one that Steve wrote. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Rear Steve again. Yeah. Song <laughs> Steve wrote, kind of about the band. Filing with the IRS. The reason I say that I was in the post office today and seen that picture of Gordon Call on the for the wanted posters. I don't want to end up like. That. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This was the political show. But, uh. <laughs> yes, we have all the uh, political parties tuned in. Um, let's see, what else can we do? What do you guys like to do to relax a little bit when you're not, when you get some days off or something? Uh, we can't Stop in and see Mark Jones and <laughs> maybe talk on a radio. We can't say what we really Hey! <laughs> <laughs> no, we do a little bit of boating, uh, motorcycling, bicycling. <laughs> Try cycling. Yeah, we're, we're dirty boaters. <laughs> we live near. I live near the lake, so I have a boat out there. All the time. And 
Uh, I don't know what else we do in our spare time. It's none of your business, Mark. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we do that we don't want to talk about. What's okay. it to you? I want to talk to my attorney. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Now, the last time you guys were, you, you have the, you still got that notebook sitting over there someplace? Oh, you bet. All right. Now, the last, you, you guys just kind of ran down that thing. You got all let's kinds see, of stuff in there. <laughs> okay. Here's the same old rundown. What do you want to know? You want to know who we played with? Yeah. Why, just, we, did, just why we did it? Kill some we time. Know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we played with Mickey Gilly. We played with Don Williams, Johnny Paycheck, Bobby Bear, Johnny Lee. Merle Haggard, Doug Kershaw, Ricky Nelson, Ronnie Millsap, Jerry Jeff Walker, Johnny Rodriguez. We played with Commander Cody. Billy Joe Shavers, that's someone that nobody's probably ever heard much about, Billy Joe Shavers. He wrote most of the songs for Waylon Jennings. Wait a minute here. I think He's we got, got an album by we got something in here by Billy, I think so. Yeah, right? you just pulled it out. No, that was Billy. Was it? Wait, who Billy was that? Swan or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> look, look, at, look, at, look at this face here. Can you... What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't look like Billy Joe Shavers. He looked like a pretty rough customer. Well, I but he's wrote a lot of songs for a lot of notorious people like Charlie Daniels and, uh, oh, I don't know, Commander Cody's done stuff by him. Uh, Bobby Barrel. Bear's done a lot by him. Both Barrels have done songs by him. Hmm. A lot of notorious, famous people. Chill. Okay. <laughs> what else we got? Seriously? There? Uh, that's, that's about it. New writers of the Purple Sage, they're a bunch of has-beens from the love generation. We played <laughs> with them, too, before. I can't remember all these people. That's been years now. But uh, we've got, got a few coming up. Like I said, we've got the two, uh, possibly Tanya Tucker. He don't know what on a date. She's looking for another date in town here. So that I don't know if she's playing at the Carlton or what. But uh, we'll be doing one with Roseanne Cash in July. July 15th, I believe, is the date. Over at Thumpers in Coon Rapids. All right. Well, well, Thumpers. well, we our first, our uh, maiden return trip to Thumpers in 1983. We haven't played there since last November, I don't think. Oh, okay. All right. Well, while Steve tries to find some more interesting things in the book there for us. <laughs> we're also affiliated with BMI, so if you have any of your people out there, remember that we're owed this amount of money for these songs that are played at right. this hour. Plus our time on a radio. It's worth about 50 cents. Now. I want that check at the end of the year. Don't forget it, BMI. <laughs> you right. out there to help us. We'll start paying up. We're on a lot of jute boxes, too. Start checking out the bars. <laughs> Incidentally, right. if anybody... Uh, would like a both barrels you know if you own a bar or something and you'd like a both barrels 45 to put on your jute box <laughs> call steve at 434-5264 that's 434-5264 and steve will send you your very own both barrels 45 rpm record now you guys also probably scratch up one side of it because that's my song on one side so <laughs> make sure that you listen to daisy on the other side <laughs> Okay, on with the show. <laughs> what what were you guys called before both barrels? You had we were the Dead Beats. Bro. Yeah, that was the Dead Beats. <laughs> uh, we, me and Steve were the only two original. Well, no, our drummer was the uh, original original drummer for the Dead Beats. I didn't Why know did you make that? Got him a, or was he a wall when he was working for the De Dead Beats? And then they repossessed him. I think yeah. gave him a new haircut. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he played with us. Then we then we worked with uh, a few of the Two of the guys from Stagebrush work uh, that are pre you know presently with Stagebrush mm -hmm. worked with us in the Dead Beats too. Oh okay. Oh yeah, that's right. The other one left the band now. And that was. That was Grant Wyclunget, drummer for the Stagebrush band. Hey, okay. He was the Dead Beats. Yeah. Right. I don't know who he thinks he is now. <laughs> hey, <with the> dead Beats. <laughs> why did you Why did you change the name? <laughs> ah, we just new band. We thought we better have a new name. We, you know, we changed most of the clients. Tell you why we couldn't get any jobs. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, we sounded so tacky that nobody'd hire us anymore. We had to erase that name and start over. Okay. Alrighty. Well, did you find any interest? Well, you put the book away now. Yeah, huh? that was pretty much the whole party there. <laughs> How about more music? Okay, yeah, more, more, more music. Let's see, what do we got nice here? Nice guy when he's sober, just so you don't think that Steve's the only one that writes comma Billy. Comma <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's there see. Comma Billy and comma rock. <laughs> now, next thing, we're coming out with a contempa Billy. <laughs> so we can get on the FM station, so we'll come clearer over the air. Okay, here they are. Seems 
looks like every time I see him He's a leaning on a bar And every drunk's his drinking partner Yeah, he's a super, super star And he's always on a bender And he's always on the skids His wife's a barroom widow With half a dozen kids And she says that he just don't know when to call it quits Yeah, but you ought to see him when he's got all his wits He'll offer his last dollar But he's only got a dime He's a nice guy when he's sober He just stays drunk all the time <laughs> Excuse him I don't abuse him He just don't know where he's at I'll buy you another drink, son And we'll try to get you back your hat I'm sorry, mister uh, He just kissed her Cause she looks just like his wife He's had a little too much Of this honky a tonkin' life Yeah, and he just don't know when to call it quits Ah, but you ought to see him When he's got all his wits Don't haul off and punch him now He's a dang good friend of mine He's a nice guy when he's sober He just stays drunk all the time They'll be closing. Yeah, but he's still, uh, he's a howling to the music. He's trying to sing along. And he's hooting. And he's hollering. And he's proud and in his prime. And he's a nice guy when he's sober. He just stays drunk all the time. Yeah, he's a nice guy when he's sober, but he stays drunk all the time. He's a nice guy. Are, and we are there. Okay, I'm on now. Okay, that's a nice guy when he's sober. That's the Both Barrels Band, and we're talking on the phone here today. Uh, or we have a caller on the on the phone line, and I'm going to try to get this. Now Steve's got the headphones on, so I'm going to have him tell me. Are we? Is it is it coming through? Can you hear it? Yeah, I is can it coming? Okay, so it's a coming over the air. And uh, who is this uh, I'm talking to today? My name is Jim Oaks from Monoka. Okay, Jim, and you had a question you wanted to ask the Both Barrels Band. Why don't you go ahead? Okay, I was wondering. Um, I remember when you guys used to be Deadbeats, and I used to see you guys at the county fair. I was wondering if you guys still do any of their songs. Well, you just heard one of them on the radio. That was a nice guy when he's sober. We did that with the Deadbeats. Yeah, I remember uh, that. They're all songs of ours anyway, but uh, yeah, we do quite a few of the old ones. Okay, also I was wondering, um, there's a song that he um, he tell you 11 now, and I get all your bills, some of that? Yeah, that's one we do on occasion, yeah. Uh, I don't know if... If, they, or if Mark's got it here in the studio or not, what was it? Forty-five. He gets all your love and I get out. all your bills. Yeah. No, no, I haven't. I haven't even heard that. that was by the me. Deadbeats. We should get you get it in here. I know we it was played on this station before, but really? I don't know if it's still in the studio or not. Okay. Yeah, all right. That sounds it. good. Well, I hope we helped you out a little bit there. Sure. I was wondering where you guys playing that tonight. Clementine. Clementine. Oh, they'll be out there. You know where that's at? Yeah, it's right off um, 65, isn't it? 
You yeah, betcha. that's right. Right across from Blaine City Hall. Okay, if you guys go up, you, got, you guys got to buy me a drink then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay well, thanks for calling. Or vice versa. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Right on. Okay, well that was it. Why don't we? Why don't you hang on to them? Because what we're gonna do right now is that'll 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 be fun. That that was pretty good having somebody call in. If you would like to ask, well, what what should we call this? We'll have a new show. Ask both barrels. As long as it's ask nothing incriminating, Steven. because we don't have our attorney <laughs> present here. Right in okay. the studio. If, if you would like to, why don't you? Why don't we? We'll take some calls right now. Four two one four one seven eight. If you wanna. Personal questions, but not too personal. Yeah, right. If you that that was a, a good idea that that guy called up and asked that. So if if anybody else wants to do that. And I see we have a phone in K Country. This is Mark. I'm not wearing any underwear. Whoop! <laughs> I don't know. No prank callers, please. I, no yeah, that, prank that, callers. I don't know what that was, but uh, it's <laughs> some strange people. <laughs> and then <laughs> okay. we got coming up June 5th, 1983, the fourth annual Pigs Feed and Fun Festival. <laughs> Now, this is a family event that we have every year. We uh, roast pigs, and uh, or you can bring the kids, and uh, or, you know, bring your parents or whatever. It's just kind of a family outing that we have every year. This will be the fourth annual one. And uh, we don't, uh, at this point, we don't know exactly where it will be held. I believe it will be in Brooklyn Park. I'm not sure. But uh, that's a good time, too. We, we have several bands, and we have different activities there, you know, going on for the kids or whatever. And a real fun event nobody would want to miss. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. I have to put those headphones back on. Nobody okay. else wants to interrogate us today, I take it. It looks that way. The nobody, nobody's calling up, but uh, yeah. just so we don't get any more. They were too shy by the last <laughs> one there. How about who's out dancing with my gal tonight? <laughs> oh, you want to hear that one? All right, let's see. Let's find it on here. Here we go. When I slid on into that bottle shop, fixing on having me a good time. Both barrels band, and they're going to dance all night at AM 1470. And we are on the phone line again. We have another caller here that called while we were playing that song. And uh, what is your name, sir? Yes. Uh, can, uh, uh, is Danny there? Uh, yeah, yeah, Danny's here. What, what is your name? Uh, name is Neil Ashland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where, where are you calling from, Neil? Calling from home. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> Where's that at? That's in Coon Rapids. All right. Now, you know, you, you wanted to ask uh, Dan what? I wanted to ask Dan where he got the idea for that song, Last Call. <laughs> okay. Dan, you got a reply for that one? Or? Well, we, we hang around a lot of drinking people. We live in... Uh, Paradise Alley up there, and there's a lot of serious drinking people. It's, it's about a guy who drank himself to death. It's kind of on a kind of theme like uh, he stopped loving her today. Only you know, it's about a guy getting his last drink or whatever. Mm -hmm. Finally, drinks himself to death. Okay. I don't know where I got the idea from, but I can't say exactly. <laughs> All right. A lot of different places, Neil. All right. Did you get that? Yep, yeah, I got it. Okay. Thanks for your call. Thanks much. Bye bye. All right. That's uh, on today's edition of. Ask Steve and Dan. We have <laughs> had a couple of calls in here today, and uh, then one we won't mention. <laughs> Unmentionable. All right. What else can we? Now I'll tell you what we can tell. You guys sell uh, some T-shirts and things from the bandstand too at night, don't you? Oh, do we sell T-shirts and albums? Yeah, Dan's the bar both barrels paraphernalia man. <laughs> He's got T-shirts. So at one time we had hats. Women's briefs. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, we got it. If you want both barrels put on it, bring it to the show. I don't care what you got. Any personal item you got. All right. Just wash them before you bring them, and we'll put both barrels on it for you some way or another. All right. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Don't and then wear them to the show. Take them off first, and then we can, we can take them and have them printed for you. Or we, we do. We sell both barrels. That way that people can walk around and promote our band for us. Right. That's uh, good advertising. Okay. What? Uh, uh, also, they can get albums there, too, right? If right. they want a copy yeah. of the album. And hopefully we'll be coming out with something new pretty quick, uh, either cassette form or an album. Okay. Uh, you know, probably it'll be a live recording. All righty. Sounds... Have you guys written enough stuff since the last album to be able to do one, or, or do you got a few more to go yet? Oh, yeah. We've got enough to do two full more albums. Yeah, at least. We've got lots of songs. We've got hours of uh, original music, and uh, we play most of them on the stage. Okay. 
All now right. that last call there, that's there isn't too many people that know about this. No, song, I haven't. We haven't that, was one. that much. I'll play it tonight if you're out there, Mark. Oh yeah, we'll be there. Incidentally, Mark Jones stops out and listens to both <laughs> barrels band. He's even sang with us before. Oh yeah, a couple of more than once. So five years down the road, when we're uh, playing at the Wiggle Inn, Mark Jones can say, "Hey, I used to play with both barrels." <laughs> I know them guys. Three, they were three just, times now I've sang you with you. You bumpers. You and betcha then, tonight will probably be four. And then <laughs> only if we play uh, Double Wide Dream Come True. Yeah, right. That's another good one that, that you yeah, guys Yeah, some of you Weight Watchers maybe want to stop out. <laughs> try to bring just about every aspect of life into our music. Do you guys remember the outdoor thing we did last summer? That was I pretty certainly good. do. It was benefit for what, muscular dystrophy? Yeah, right. Sure. Right. The Are they going to have another one this year? They sold an I don't album know. out there, auctioned it off for 20 bucks. An album, yeah. A big one, $20. <laughs> I mean, Merle Haggard don't bring in that. Backs. <laughs> <Some man. laughs> Merle Haggard's records don't bring in that. Yeah, money. right. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. Well, of course, Merle Haggard never played at Clementine's either. <laughs> Clementine's Bar under new management. But the right. new owner's name is Ken, too, so you stop in and talk to the owner and call him Ken by his first name, same as the old owner. Then why don't why doesn't no it say Ken's Bar? Well, Clementine? I don't know. It's Clementine's Bar. Clementine? Isn't there a song? <laughs> like, oh, my darling. <laughs> yeah, there was a song like that. <laughs> but for those of you who do uh, <clears throat> indulge in the sport of drinking, bring your own bottle. It's a 3-2 and set-up place. That's Clementine's Bar. Tonight, both barrels back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then, of course, tomorrow night is the, the smelt fry. Smelt fry, yeah, with all the smelt you can stand. Beer, women, oh! I've, I've never had that. smelt before. What is that? Oh, they're good. They they deep fry them, you know, and it's uh, kind of. They like thing. little sardines or something, or? Oh, uh, they're bigger than that. Hmm. But uh, geez, I can't explain it to. I mean, bring bring some back in a doggy bag for me. Yeah, you? okay. <laughs> <laughs> that and some beer, I'll just pour it all together. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's a good time, though. It is definitely a good time. The first year we played out there, I walked up on the stage and looked out, and there was people as far as I could see, and I got shaky in the knees, but after I got into it, it's fun. I'll tell you, it's real fun. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah, the 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 e babies. I think that is the biggest crowd we ever played for is that Smelt Fry. Because even, even bigger than the Met? Yeah, yeah. even at the Met Center. Uh, I think there was, like I said, the one year there was uh, over close to 14,000 people, they figured, hmm. at that Smelt Fry when it was out on Superior Point. And the Met was 8,000 people. About yeah, 8 or 9 or something like that, yeah. Uh, don't forget, again, if anybody wants to know where Both Barrels is playing, that, that phone number for our 24-hour recording is 434-6136. You can call that 24 hours a day. Find out where, when, and why we will be playing. <laughs> where, when, and why, huh? All righty. Well, we are just about out of time, but uh, do you have any any more final things you want to plug here before we wrap it up? Just that uh, Steve's next got time them. we're asking the questions. We're tired of you asking <laughs> us questions all the time. That's right, Jones. <laughs> I want to dedicate this next song to Pete and Doug out there. Now, Doug is learning. you got to bend a little to get someplace in life. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot for stopping by today, guys. 